Um, well, I've just clicked recording uh, and then I'll just share my screen and then we can just go through it. And then there'll be a chance to ask lots of questions at the end. But I'll stop the recording for that. Uh, cool. So today we're going to be talking about AI and uh, images. Ah, cool. Somebody from Cambridge. Oh, well welcome. Um, so yeah, we're talking today about AI and images and campaigning which is an important topic. Um, just to start off, I'm Hannah, I'm the co-organizer for Campaign Lab, which is a community of data scientists, researchers, activists, we're all working together to try and develop innovative election tools and improve how we understand campaigning. And that's all of us there on that day, looking at very intentively at some cool AI tools that we made. Uh, what we tend to do is we build tools for people uh, so, for example, recently we built a door knocking training bot, which allows you to kind of have a doorstep conversation with different AI personas and, and then rate your conversation and tell you how you can improve, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, we also conduct research. We recently launched some research on um, working with our partners at Root Cause Global, uh, looking at TikTok videos and analyzing them um, and using uh, ChatGPT to basically categorize them. And then finally, we also like to run experiments. So if you're ever interested in like running any sort of campaign experiments, do get in touch. Uh, we're currently running some interesting ones on Facebook at the moment. Um, but yeah, do get in touch with us. So those are the sort of things we do. Uh, what's the purpose of today? Uh, as it always is with AI and campaigning, it's to explore and to work out how we might be able to use these tools. Um, it's very much beginner level, this is very basic, and also it's a very practical session. So we'll be demoing and showing you how to do things. So uh, what is prompt engineering? Again, those of you that came to last training may be familiar with this, or so kind of race through it. Uh, but essentially, prompt engineering is how we communicate with these models. So it's a process of constructing a prompt, an instruction, uh, to get a particular output. Um, your prompt Prompts generally contain three things, which is the instruction, what you want the model to do, the task or the thing you want it to perform, the context, so any external information that will help get you a better output, uh, and then also the output indicator, so what type or form of what you want. And that's really, really important because the more specific you are in prompting, the better the output. And that particularly applies to things like images, actually. So what are the limits of these tools? And again, this may be familiar to those of you with the, on the last training, but it's really important to go over these, even with images, um, because it's, it's really important to remember them. So number one, it's not always right and it can make things up uh, subtly. So last time I showed you how it made things up in a piece of text. Here you can see in this image that this is not correct. If any of you have been to London, you'll know the Shard is south of the river, the Parliament is north of the river. So from any angle, this is in completely the wrong place. It's a beautiful picture. London is looking lovely, but this is in completely the wrong place. And that just shows you how subtly it can get things wrong. So it looks like a good picture, might not actually be a good picture. Second of all, any AI tool is limited by its training data. So I asked my journey to come up with a picture of Olsager, which is the town I grew up in, uh, of Olsager Town's High Street. This is the reality of All Sager Towns High Street. This is what Mid Journey created. So obviously Mid Journey doesn't have many images of All Sager's High Street, so it's got nothing to draw upon. So it's limited by what training data it does have. So it's very good at creating a generic looking English high street in a town. I don't know where this would be. It might look familiar to some people. It's completely made up. Um, but again, it's, it's not All Sager. So this just gives you a sense of like how um, it's very much disconnected from reality. Also, the real photo, also the imagined mid-journey photo, completely different. Third, biases. Again, this was um, something from the last presentation, but essentially all this training data has within it structural biases, everything else, and that really affects what kind of output you get. If I put in, create a picture from me of an Irish man, it comes up with this, which is obviously like very stereotypical, um, so you have to be super aware when you are campaigning that there are structural biases in these models and they will produce things that reproduce biases. Um, so again, you need to be really aware of this. Limit three. Limit four, people are working on tools that can detect if something's generated by AI. And this is really important because it's implications for you as an organization and in terms of using uh, AI transparently. Uh, people may be able to detect when you're using AI. There's also people trying to 
um, kind of innovate so they don't have to watermark things and they can't be detected. So it's kind of an ongoing war. But if you're thinking quite seriously about using early images at any point in your organization, you really need to think about the fact that it could be detected. And if you're not transparent by putting in a disclaimer, then that is kind of a bit of a problem. Um, rules for using AI images. And you'll notice these are very similar to my rules for using ChatGPT because I think they're really, really important. So number one, don't ever put any sensitive material, individual information into any kind of AI tool. This includes video uh, that we're going to go into, images, music, all the stuff that we'll do today. Be really careful about um, data protection. Do remember that you are ultimately responsible for the final output. Uh, so you should always verify anything that's coming out of these models. Uh, and also make sure that the content that you're creating adheres to your own organization's standards and values. This is really, really important, particularly when we're dealing with images. Uh, do not use AI to generate fake photographs of humans or places in a way that can be um, misleading. So again, don't kind of make fake pictures and be like, these are real activists, or, you know, this is a real place. Like you will get into trouble, someone will spot it, and it will be a problem. Um, and also make sure that any campaign materials that are received by people are ultimately authored by a human being, uh, and don't let content go up. It's been solely created by AI. Um, and also be mindful of the fact that many AI model policies forbid large-scale use of these models for political purposes. So again, these are kind of guidelines that we try to adhere to um, at Campaign Lab, and I suggest that you sort of try and work out in your own organization which of these fit. Uh, but they're kind of a good kind of six things to remember. Um, and again, as we'll explore later, when we come to images, things do get a little bit more blurry in terms of what the ethical guidelines might be. Uh, so on to ethics, finally. There are many ethical discussions around the use of AI. Really important to discuss them. Now is probably not the place for us to go into this, uh, but as you can see, there are loads of big questions around this, particularly the ones around disinformation, transparency. These come up particularly when we're thinking about AI images. Um, and just a really interesting extra point here. Uh, so one of the biggest uh, things that's come out of kind of AI image generation is lots of artists have gotten really annoyed at the fact that models are using their art and then producing things in their style. So there's now um, a tool called Nightshade, which is basically an AI poison. So if you put any of your art on the internet and you install Nightshade within it, it means that a model cannot interpret it and it will actually mess that model up. So artists are now poisoning AI image tools because they want to fight and retain their art, which I think is actually a really, really interesting thing that's happening. Uh, it's a real sort of fighting back moment. Uh, so if you're interested in that, Google Nightshade and artists and AI, and you'll see really interesting things. Um, if you're interested in ethics, again, here are some groups to look up further. And um, some of the people that are involved in sort of the different ethical areas and the communities that are organizing and kind of where they've got to. Uh, but again, if you are interested in this, I really would dig into this further because uh, this workshop probably isn't the place for us to talk about ethics. Uh, but I'm really keen that people do think about the ethical implications of what they're doing. So why would we use AI for images, video, other kind of content? Well, there's three kind of reasons that you might actually decide to use AI to generate images. Um, these are the three main reasons I think are important. Um, first is that AI can be really useful in generating images that kind of trying to convey concepts. So a um, concept that I remember a campaign was trying to think about was things like transparency in parliament. So creating an image of parliament inside a glass box is actually incredibly helpful. Quite hard to do, uh, very hard to do manually. So if you're a campaigner trying to like pull together a quick email and you want to talk about transparency in parliament, actually going to an AI model and saying, can you create me an image that conveys this idea is actually a really good thing to do. So if you're ever trying to convey something that's difficult or is conceptually hard to communicate, AI can be really, really useful in giving you some ideas. Um, the other thing that's really important is that if you are campaigning on very sensitive topics, um, where say the people involved or affected might not want their photographs taken, uh, it might be that you're kind of um, campaigning over a particular issue. A good example of this was um, Amnesty at one point were campaigning around some protests um, and the people involved in the protests didn't want their images uh, shared because they worried about kind of the impact of them, of, like the police suppression. Um, so what Amazon did was create AI-generated images to kind of convey how the protest happened, 
Uh, they very clearly said these are generated by AI, um, and that was their way of like, fundraising at the field to protect these protesters' rights. So they were having to think, okay, how do I balance raising awareness of this appeal and getting people to actually be engaged enough to give money versus um, protecting the identities of people? And then, you know, I really, really worked. You know, so if you're ever trying to like tell the stories of maybe people who are particularly vulnerable, you don't want their pictures or you're trying to convey the topic, like that can be a reason why you'd use images. And, and finally, they're quite useful for things like stock images. So if you're looking for like backgrounds, event images, cartoons, explainers, logos, all those things, AI is really useful for. Um, because you can sort of like um create those those different images. Um again, I'm saying there's a bit of caution around like real people or trying to manufacture real people because there are just some you know, blurry lines there. Um, but stock images would, would be fine. And particularly if you're sort of blurring those images, um, it's not that different to having a stock image. And people like Adobe are creating an AI-generated stock image library in a lot of their products. Uh, so I think stock images is the way to go in terms of thinking about this. Uh, just to go through some of the main tools that you can use and the sort of the pros and cons of them, we'll be going through a few of these in our demos today. Uh, the first one is uh, called DALI. And you can get that through ChatGPT Plus membership, which is about $24 a month. And the pros are that it's really easy to use, that you can upload things. It's quite creative and you can do negative prompting as well. Um, on the con side, it's less good at creating realistic images. Um, Mid Journey is uh, about 25 free images and then it's $10 a month for 200 images. And kind of it's an escalating scale for like how fast you want to go and how unlimited this is and um, it's very good for realism like in the sense that if you want very realistic photos that look like real things uh, it's very good for that Cons are it's quite hard to set up so it involves you having to like have a discord server um, and also struggles with words more than Dolly. Dolly is much better at words as in inserting words into images um another option is to use something called stable diffusion which you can use through the dream studio um, that is free for 30 images and then you kind of pay for like how much you use it. Um, it's quite easy to use, uh, but it's quite limited by the styles that it suggests. Whereas you can be a bit more free-flowing with two, the two other tools. Uh, and then the, finally, there's a free option, which is Stable Diffusion um, Online Playground, which is completely free to use. Um, you can do negative prompts as in, say, not this. Um, it tends to be a bit less realistic and it's an older model of stable diffusion. And so it's quite slow um, and it also contains a watermark uh, of your content once you've sort of produced it. Um, so just to give you an example of the different kind of outputs, this first one was made by Dali. Uh, I just said the prompt was just create an image of a protester holding a sign saying end homelessness, make it look like a photograph. So as you can see, Dali did quite well with the words. It's correct and homelessness. Uh, this looks reasonably real, uh, but it's not kind of showing face or any particular detail. Uh, this is Mid Journey, again, a very realistic person. Looks like a real person. Hasn't quite got the text correct. It says Lend, Lend Homesel. Oh, Lend Homesel, which isn't quite right. Uh, and in this one is st Stable Diffusion, which is like, a kind of older model, as you can see, still looks quite unrealistic. Um, and again, the text is not quite right. Yeah, so you can sort of see the different models and their pros and cons just from this prompt. Um, and as you can see, yeah, Mid Journey is probably the most photorealistic. It's quite hard to see how that isn't a real person. You look at it, uh, which is a bit scary, to be honest with you. So demo one, let's try Dali out. Uh, so we're going to do this through ChatGPT to begin with, and then we'll go on to Mid Journey. Uh, and this is just an image that we made with Dali. So we were launching our TikTok research the other week and our event image was this, what I just said. Dali creates an image of a robot hand holding a phone where they're looking at TikTok. And it did that really, really well, really successfully. Got the TikTok logo right, brilliant. Um, so let's start off with Dali. So would somebody like to give me an image that they'd like to make? Suggestions in the chat or feel free to shout out. Um, Lee? <laughs> um, police officers um, investigating crime. 
create an image of police officers investigating a crime. In Stratford-upon-Avon? In Stratford-upon-Avon. Uh, upon Avon. What, what will this be used for? So um, we've got police and crime commissioner elections. For a local election leaflet. And I'm not sure whether it will be good to use this, but we're just going to see what it yeah. does um, and see how it does it. Okay. So ChatGP goes off and thinks it's creating an image, uh, which takes a little bit of time to do, not too long. Now let's see what it comes up with. I'm quite interested to see whether this knows where Stratford upon Avon is, what it comes up with. Um, we'll see. Okay, so it's quite fairy tale -y. Um, do we want to make this look more realistic? Yeah, it's, it's gotten confused with the time. So let's say, uh, so what's really good about Dali is you can just say change this and it will remember what it's already done so we can say make this look um like a photograph um and set in the modern day as it seems to be getting a bit confused that looks more like it's shakespeare time to be honest though the church spire does look like where shakespeare is buried but there's no does river it? running down the high street <laughs> In case it's getting some of that right. That is just interesting in itself. Um, yeah, it's like, this is very old school, like, detecting as well. It looks like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. See, this is the really interesting thing. Okay. A little bit better. Actually, I mean, take the churches out, and that, I could almost say to you, was the town centre. Interesting. It does look so, a lot like that. Yeah, you can see it sort of improved. There's still some errors here. This policeman's face isn't quite right. At first glance, you're like, oh, interesting. Um, and again, what you can do is you can just say, um, you know, uh, kind of, you can ask it to do more things. So I might say, make the weather really stormy. And then it will kind of change that. Uh, so we can see when it comes back. We've just got a question. It is. It is quite painterly. It's quite strange. Uh, yeah. So it's not quite quite as good as um, reality, but it's not good. Uh, so we'll just we'll see if it can make, change the weather. But as you can see, the way you're interacting with Dolly is you're giving it feedback, and it remembers that feedback, and then um, creates the new the new image. Um, oh wow. Okay. It's gone kind of not as photography, less photography. It's gone a bit, a bit crazy. Um, I think. How about a voter ID prompt? Ah, that would be interesting. We'll try that one. Uh, create. Let's see how it does with this. From Kate, Kate saying, create an image to remind someone to bring. Voter ID to the polling station or to bring ID. Let's see what it does. And this is quite interesting. I'm, I'm very interested to see what Dolly comes up with. I hope it doesn't now put that in the crime scene image. I don't think it will. We'll see. Sometimes it does get confused. Um, I'm very interested to see what it comes up with for this. Ooh. I'm also going to move this up because I'm getting a bit confused. Don't forget your ID. Why is everybody drinking Pepsi? This is really weird. Why well, is definitely the Pepsi one? <laughs> okay, I don't know what's happened there. But um, let's just say... Uh, Make it appeal to people who might not vote often. That is really, really weird. <laughs> I think that's the oddest thing I've ever seen. Like, 
because what you're getting is you're getting the model's like conceptual like sense of what that would be which is very odd and because chat gpt is text and language as well as image it's even stranger that that's what it's thinking uh or not thinking it doesn't think but that's what it's predicting vote every vote counts bring your vote make your voice vote it counts very american um but this is you know i mean guess there's excitement isn't there um pretty interesting yes i think it probably is like trying to be us i'll just say make it appeal to uk voters uh and uh would be something a campaign would share would share on social media so as you can see also the more information i give it the more likely you are to get a good output so all of this is in the prompting literally all the ai is about prompting and how you're engaging with the, the model um because that helps you sort of understand better what's going on so we'll just select that create an image and then we'll move on to mid journey because we've got lots to get through we haven't even hit video and voice and music yet which is going to be very interesting suffice to say i got it to create a song about campaign innovation that's very good actually oh wow okay wales has a strong showing here you don't know what the bear is about um Oh, bears like a, an English thing again Varoad UK that's that's definitely wrong so I prompt again saying vote UK um yeah strong emphasis on Wales um a bear I do not understand the bear but I mean you know that's interesting in itself lots of Union Jack imagery very very strange okay so I'm going to park that there because that is um Bali. We're now going to move on to Mid Journey. Uh, again, this is an image that was created with Mid Journey of somebody delivering a leaflet, which is not bad. Uh, so I'm just going to pop into Mid Journey. Let me know if you can still see. Can you see my Discord server? No, we've up. seen the presentation. Right. I need to reshare my screen then. So stop share, and I'm going to share screen. Uh, share this one. Okay, can you That's guys good. see this now? Yeah. Okay, so this is Mid Journey. Uh, I have a Mid Journey bot installed on my own Mid Journey server. Um, there are really good detailed instructions on how to do this online, which I can share with you. Um, but basically, um, the way you you interact with Mid Journey is you put in a little message uh, and you put slash imagine. And now if somebody wants to give me something that they'd like, I mean, we could use the um, police officers investigating a crime. Well, the voter ID uh, was a good one because that is a message we've got to get out. Yeah, so um, the thing about Mid Journey is it's less good at coming up with ideas for something. Usually you have to describe exactly what you want. So one thing we could do is um, we could describe a situation where somebody has an idea, a photo of somebody with an idea to polling station. Yeah. Um, so a photograph of a woman entering a polling station in the UK in 2020 uh, and showing her ID to the attendant. Uh, and then what you do with mid journey is a way to get things to look very realistic is you have to put in um like the camera that you're using so i'm going to use a shortcut so if you tell it what camera is taking the image uh, and you put in this little extra prompt which i will share with you uh usually it's a lot better uh what we'll also say is the image is being used in a magazine so that tends to get a higher quality of image so we just go return it sends the command to the mid journey bot uh, and then it's just got a percentage and it's waiting to create um so we'll just give that a second as you can see it usually it always comes up with four variations so my homeless and homeless protester image earlier gave me these four protesters 
Uh, and then I picked one, but I had four options to do that. Um, and in fact, there was even more here. Uh, and this was my my London photo, but again, I had many to pick from. So it tends to just do four images. Okay, here's our voter ID. So any of these that we think look like, this looks quite like a polling station, possibly. This also looks quite like a polling station. Uh, these aren't bad, are they? Uh, so one of the great things you can do about mid journeys, there's a few different functions you can use. So upscale means you're upscaling the first image, the second, the third, the fourth. Variations means you're varying the image. So um, what image do we like best? If someone says this is one, two, three, four. I think I four. Four, okay. So let's um, vary four and let's so we submit, and then let's upscale four as well. So we've just upscaled it, and this now gives us the chance to, um, we can zoom out. So I can zoom out twice as wide so we can see more of the scene. So it's now possible to upscale. So I'm just gonna zoom out, zoom out two times, and see what it comes up with. Uh, it's currently doing these other things as well. So we just have to wait for a bit because otherwise it'll get confused. Uh, so we're varying it and we're also upscaling it. So we'll just uh, give it a bit of a chance. Its variations are coming through. So as you can see, it's the same vibe and I've set it to variation strong. Um, but as you can see, these are all people in the same kind of vibe of a calling station sharing ID. Uh, and as you can see, it all looks pretty real. This is why it's actually very important. And as you can see, this is zooming out. Ooh. So um, we're zooming out, so we're seeing more of the scene. Uh, and again, it starts to get a little less good the further out you go. The other thing that you can do is you can um, decide to vary a region. So if I click vary region, and then I select, so say if I want to vary base of this woman, I can go um, submit, and then it will start to vary one part of the image. Um, but as you can see, you can do quite a lot with this. Um, it's quite problematic because you are creating fake people here, and that has an implication, like quite a serious implication. Um, so it's always worth kind of like thinking about when and why you do that. Um, I'll just let this keep going. So it's, I think it's getting stuck slightly. It might take a little while. Um, we might leave that while it's. Oh no, here we go. So it's it's in the process. So as you can see, these are being changed. This person's face is being changed, and we're being given more options. It's quite interesting. It seems like a lot of people are wearing hats, maybe. Um. yeah it's just creating new new faces um again this is quite scary like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dress it up any other way this is quite scary and a bit strange um that this is now possible and again we started off with models that couldn't do hands and now we've got this so yeah as you can see it's varied that region it's given me they're all wearing the same coat still but it's given me like four different new faces on that that one person uh, so I'm just going to stop that there, but hopefully you've seen kind of how how mid journey works. Um, I'm now going to go back to our presentation, which is here, and move on to the next bit. So yeah, we covered variations. We covered the idea that you need to say user camera to make it better. If you want more hints about how to use mid journey, there's a link here. Um, we talked about variations. Again, you can see more impact of variations. Uh, I'm now going to go on to uh, limits. So again, struggles with words. And it's also very hard to make super specific things. And it also might take some time. Like you can often iterate and keep trying with mid-journey, but it, it takes a bit of time. We're now going to move on to Canva. So who here uses Canva in campaigning? It's quite a common, common tool. Okay, I'm going to show you... Uh, some examples in Canva and some of the cool things that Canva can do. 
So I'm just logged into Canva. I've got this image. This is actually AI generated. It's an older woman at a protest. Um, and what's interesting is if you click on edit photo, you get Magic Studio. And Magic Studio is, is a series of like AI tools. So I can remove the background really easily. Super easy uh, to do. Uh, I'll just redo that because I don't want to do that. Uh, I can also do Magic Eraser, which means I can brush over the bit. So this is obviously nonsense. So I'm going to take out what Mid Journey is telling me. I do this. It will erase that part of the image. I haven't done that very well. So I'm just going to redo that and say erase all of this. Yeah, and I've got a nice blank thing that we want. So that's called Magic Eraser. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can do Magic Edit, which is where you uh, brush over the area you want to edit. So I quite want to give this lady a hat. So I'm going to brush over where a hat would sit. And I'm going to say, describe your edit. I want to add a woolly, woolly hat. Um, and then I'm going to say, generate. And it's generating some options for me, bit by bit. Uh, it might take a little bit. And now it's giving me some options for a hat for this older lady to wear. That doesn't quite look like a hat. That one's not bad. And again, like I've slightly misplaced the hat, but it inserts into the image, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can use grabbing text. So if there was text here, I could grab the text. You can also um, magic grab the object. So this would allow me to grab this lady out of her um, image and move her around, which is kind of cool. So this is all like image editing that is now embedded into Canva. This is all AI tools that are doing this in the back, um, which is pretty cool. So uh, Canva now has a lot of AI abilities. It's worth exploring, playing around with that and seeing what you can do with it. Uh, okay, on to videos and music. So uh, you just such a... So things are getting a bit weird on AI music for video. Um, lots of you might have like noticed some of the deep fakes that have been like pushed around on Twitter. A lot of that is due to people taking clips of people's voices and then producing a fake. Um, that is now actually quite easy to do, uh, which is problematic. Again, I think I'm showing you this bit less as a useful campaigning tool and more uh, this can be done. Be aware of it. Uh, I mean, some of the music is quite useful if you're ever trying to like do background music for a video. You just need something with a certain vibe. But we'll just go through some of what is now possible. Uh, so we're going to start with video. Uh, so one of the really interesting things is there's a good platform called CapCut. If people have ever heard of CapCut, it's very really easy to use. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this article, which is a BBC News article, which hopefully you can all see, which is about Shell suing Greenpeace. So I'm just going to copy this article. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into CapCut. Um, if I can, I think I've got CapCut open here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to look at, where is it? Not video, script to video. Here we go. So this allows me to put in a script. So I'm just going to paste the stuff from the article. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff because this is just extra stuff. I'm going to like edit this a little bit and say, so this is a script of the video you want to create. So Shell is doing Greenpeace uh, for damages, activist boarded. Uh, okay, let's get rid of this um, and get rid of this. They remained on the, okay. Just get rid of this. Um, so well, you you try to simplify the script as much as possible because this is going to be a very, very short um, video. Uh, here we go. All right. So I've done that. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what kind of voice do we want this to be in? Um, British male, female storyteller, energetic female. Should we try that? Energetic female. 
And what I can do is say generate, and I'm going to say uh, smart generation. So custom generation will be you put in your own photos. This is smart generation. So what it's doing now is it's generating video. I'm going to actually stop showing my screen and reshare because I need to share sound, which I hadn't done. Uh, share sound. There we go. Right. And then hopefully we'll be able to see our little video. But it's taking the script or just lifting information from it and it's generating a little video for social media. Um, it's just taking a little bit of time. What it's doing is it's reading the text, it's then looking at all its images and it's pulling together images that are you relate to the text. Uh, so let's see what it comes up. Shell is suing Greenpeace for $2.1 million 17M in damages after environmental protesters occupied a vessel okay. transporting one of the oil company's floating platforms earlier this year. Activists boarded the White Marlin ship north of the Canary Islands in the Atlantic in January. Shell said it was entitled to recover the significant costs of responding to Greenpeace's dangerous actions. However, Greenpeace said it planned to contest the action. The environmental group described it as one of the biggest legal threats in its history. Greenpeace said, the claim is one of the biggest legal threats against the Greenpeace Network's ability to campaign in the organization's more than 50-year history. Protests at sea are an established part of Greenpeace's operations. Shell is no, suing oh, Greenpeace. God. Right, I'm going to pause that. So what you can see there is it gets some of these images right, some of it it does not. Um, if any of you have been like on TikTok recently, you will see loads of these weird like explainer videos. These are all coming from like TikTok. Um, but if you have got kind of a short story that you need to get out of there and you want an easy way to convey it, using this as a starting point is quite good, actually. Um, it's not great. It's okay. The voices could be better. There are some voices that work better than others. This one's not great, but I think there's some other ones that are a bit better. It's worth playing around with because if you need some like really quick content that you're not like too bothered about being perfect, this is a really good starting point. Um, so that is CapCut. And we've taken just literally an article, edited it down. You could have put that through ChatGPT and then put it into CapCut. Be like, make this into the ideal script for a 30 second video. Uh, but these are kind of quick, kind of um, short clicks to really like creating content. Just some other interesting video tools that are out there. There's a really cool tool that does YouTube summaries. You install it as a plug into your browser and it basically takes a YouTube video and just generates a summary for you, which is very useful if you're trying to like consume content. Uh, another article to video uh, platform is something called Pictory AI, which uses more kind of, it's doing the same thing as CapCut, but slightly, slightly less good. And uh, you also have something called HeyGen, which is really good. So I'm just going to click on this tweet. So basically you can upload some footage of yourself saying something, and then you can manipulate the video self or avatar to say anything. So this is um, one made by a guy called Ethan, which I think he's actually deleted this tweet, which is a bit annoying. Okay, I will show you that later. But yeah, Hey Jen allows you to use create fake videos of yourself if you just upload 30 seconds of footage. Um, and again, there's huge amounts of change happening with like videos. You'll have all seen Sora probably that launched from OpenAI. That's not available for like public use yet, but they're researching it. So I imagine that will be out in the next six months. Um, but again, that creates like some pretty sophisticated videos. Um, and then Google's got something called Lumia, which I think will be quite similar and be trying to compete with that. Uh, the current commercially available one is called Runway, which is not bad. It's not great. It's quite expensive. Um, I think Sora is probably going to blow it out of the water, to be honest with you, you know, once it comes out properly. Uh, but there are a few things with video. As you can see, video is not quite there yet some of these handy things that allow you to like pull things together but it's, it's not quite know where it needs to be yet um just a quick demo on animating background videos and so i'm just going to show you something called pika which i use at the moment if i need to like animate stock footage in the back and um, this is again using discord so i'm just going to stop sharing and then reshare and uh, bum, bum. so i'm just going to share my discord so if i go to pika which I think is, where's Pika? This one's Pika. So Pika is again a bot that uses Discord. Uh, and what you can do is you can say animate, 
and then you just upload the image that you want to anim um, animate. So I'm going to animate a busy corridor in the NHS, which was, uh, this again was created by Midjourney. I did not create this image. Uh, you can see it there, and it's going to kind of animate that for a few seconds. Uh, and if I just go um, return, it's going to send that to Pika. This is a free service. I haven't actually paid anything for Pika. I think you can pay, but I haven't I don't need to use it very much. Um, so I'm just going to wait for that to, to do its thing. It might take a little while. Meanwhile, we're going to move on to music. So let me just head back to images. Sorry, this is a lot of moving between screens, I realize. Uh, so let's have a look at some music. So music is very interesting. Um, if I just click on music gen, there we go. Can you still see my tab? Uh, great. And I'm just going to check that we're sharing sound. Yeah, we are. So someone describe some music to me. What you'd like to hear. Just a vibe. Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury singing happy birthday. <laughs> so I don't know if it will do this. Freddie Mercury style happy birthday. So this doesn't do, do lyrics. It kind of generates background music. This okay. is a free uh, demo of Facebook's music generation. Um, so it's kind of, we'll take its time. We're like fourth in a queue. Um, we'll give that a little bit of time, I think. Meanwhile, let's move on to the other example, just while it's doing that. So Rickfusion is still as, in fact, let's try Suno. So Suno is over here. Oh, in fact, let's see if this is, no, it's still going. Okay, Suno. Uh, so let's go create. Ooh. I've said create uh, a song about campaign innovation, which is a slow sound ballad. Uh, I don't know if you want to say which is a, let's say which is a pop song. Pop song, Freddie Mercury style. So this is going to be interesting. So if I say create, and then what it's doing is it's just creating two songs about campaign innovation, and it will create the song. Oh, no. Oh, OK, so it's upset because we're saying Freddie Mercury. That's quite good. That means it's trying not to like break copyright. Great. OK, it should work. So that's an interesting thing. They've obviously built in not like ripping off artists into this tool, which is actually a good thing. Um, okay. Revolutionize the game. Okay. So it's given me the it's given me the, the lyrics. Do you want to hear this? Okay. I got a vision, a brand new invention Gonna shake up the world with my campaign intention I'll be the leader, the one day in my life My idea's gonna take it higher yeah. gonna As you can see, let's, let's do one about voter ID this could actually be quite useful for a campaign to get a song about uh, vote the importance of voting <laughs> in elections. Uh, let's call it a uh, ballad, slow ballad style. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not suggesting that this is a serious campaign tool i'm just trying to show you what is now possible voice of the people okay that sounds like it'll be quite good or raise your voice let's get voice of the people let's give me two options okay in the silence the echoes of the past whispers of freedom faded so fast
in the world. Oh my gosh. Okay, so again, quite weird that this is now possible. <laughs> I think uh, this particular platform is probably the leader. So it's called Suno AI. And basically, you're able to create you know, music, lyrics, voices. It's pretty good at the moment. Uh, about any kind of thing that, that you want. Um, again, really quite scary that that is now possible. Um, okay, uh, was there anything else? Oh, the other thing that I want to show is just uh, voice cloning. So again, uh, if I go on this one, which is um, Facebook's, yeah, this is Facebook's voice cloning. So Facebook's released this model, which allows you to clone your voice. So I'm going to say generate speech in the style of any audio sample. So I'm just going to quickly record my voice into this. Uh, so what I do is I click record my voice. Okay, It's going to tell me to read something. And then it's going to yeah, do it. Okay, record your reading. The audio, oh, allow this time. The audio generation technology used in music production has improved the quality of sound and speech in voice recordings. Okay, create this voice. So this is now creating a clone of my voice. Done. And now I can ask it, my voice to say something. What What do you guys want me to say? Something ridiculous, maybe. Well, well not so ridiculous. Vote Sarah Feeney for Police and Crime Commissioner. It's Sarah Feeney for the Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, anything else? Just give it a bit more text. On the 2nd of May, 2024. On the second, just on the second of May, twenty twenty four. Um, she only Labour can beat the Tories. The best choice. <laughs> only Labour can beat the Tories, or oh, only Labour can. She's the best choice. Yeah. I'll leave that last bit out. Okay. okay. Um, generate. So what it's doing now is it's generating my voice, and let's see how good it is. Again, some of the deep fake technology um, or deep fakes that have been circulating will be using this kind of technology. Uh, okay, so it's given me two options. So this is one. Vote Sarah Feeney for the police and crime commissioner on 2nd of May, 2024. She's the best choice. That's oh, all right, not great. And as you can see, those deep fakes weren't great either. You could definitely tell they were audio generated. Vote Second. Sarah Feeney for the police and crime commissioner on 2nd of May 2024. She's the best choice. That's much better, I think, that second one. Don't know how alike it sounds to me, but again, this will only get better. And that was only using, what, 10 seconds of my voice? But given it like an hour's recording of my voice, it would probably get better. Um, which again is why we've got to be really worried about deepfakes because that is now possible. Um, cool. Uh, this is just some more stuff around translation. We'll leave that. Cool. So just to finish off and then we'll move to questions. Uh, these are some communities that are working on all this stuff. Um, there's the AI Progressives in the US. There's an AI Campaigners Network in Brussels. There's the Civic Observatory in the UK, which I'm part of and on the board of. Um, and if you're interested in anything else, check out my AI and Campaigners Handbook. But for now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to stop the recording and we can have a bit of a chat about what we have just witnessed, which was a voter turnout campaign through song.